Welcome back everybody, my name is Philip, and it is time for another start to finish photo editing tutorial. Now the picture we're going to work on today has been taken in Kyoto or close to Kyoto in Japan recently. So we're going to use Photoshop and spice it up just ever so slightly and we're going to move from this original image to that final image uh, using well rather simple techniques. Do note that to understand this video it would be good if you do know what a brush is, what a layer and a layer mask is and what adjustments are. If you have that you're good to go. If you do not have a look at this video or somewhere that is popping up there uh, and get the basics down and then jump right in. Cool, let's do it. Awesome. So now that we are in Photoshop, we're going to tackle that picture in three steps. The first one is we're going to fix the proportions so it is a little bit misformed. Uh, then we're going to work on the colors. And lastly, we're going to work on the light. And once that's done, we're going to see if we have to go back to any of these steps to make last adjustments. So let's get started. First thing I need to do is, why, for reasons that are just my own, uh, I'm going to hit Command or Control on a Windows and the letter J for Jaguar. And I'm going to make a, a copy of my background layer. First goal, you can see that uh, it's it's kind of oddly shaped. So the, the line in the middle is not actually perfectly in the middle and uh, neither is the pathway that you have right here. So we can fix that easily. Let's hit Command or Control and T for Tiger on your keyboard. And on the top, you'll find this little, this little warp symbol right here. Now, once you have that, hit it. And what we can do now, we have different kinds of points that we can use on the image to transform the photo. So I'm just going to take the first one. I need this to be more over here. So I'm just going to drag it over. I need that bottom part to be really a little bit more in the center of the image. So I'm going to do it just like that. And after, let's see if I want to drag that over here again. It's a little bit of a kind of back and forth. You're going to try to find the, the kind of proportion that you like. So you can just constantly go drag the different things around until you reach the point where you say, yeah, I think that looks much better. Once you're done, hit the enter key on your keyboard and it's gonna transform that thing for you. So if we look at the before and after, we can see now this is a bit more proportional. Now for anyone that has worked with Photoshop before, you know there are many ways to achieve the same goal. I'm a simple man of simple layers, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command or Control, uh, Option, Shift and N on my keyboard to get a new layer. Once I have that, I'm going to change its blend mode to color. So some of you may see where I'm going here. I'm going to use a brush and pick a color that I want to paint into my image. In this case, I want to give the image really green feeling because it is a bamboo forest. And when you think of these things where you see them in the movies, they're always really, really intensely dark green uh, or just green in general. So we're going to go in the same direction. So I'm going to pick a nice green from the colors that are already in my image, something like that. And don't worry if you screw it up, you can always change it later. Now I'm going to set my opacity to around 30 to 40%. I'm just going to start painting that green into my photo. I'll be careful not to go into these bushes on the side of the path too much because I need those later. Uh, they have a nice red base color, so we can use that to create really nice contrast to the green that comes from the trees. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint that in here. Now, when you do these things, you, of course, want to go and uh, be careful not to, uh, you know, have white, white spaces left over like I have here right now. So I'm just going to work away, paint that in a little bit and come back to you in just a second. Perfect. So let's have a quick look at the before and after. So before it's not that green and now it's a bit greener. Now I know it looks kind of weird, but don't worry, we're going to get there in the next steps, which is the light. So we could now start to work on the colors for the foreground and stuff, but let's just go to the light. What I'm going to use a lot today is curves. Curves are my go-to thing and I use tons of them in every single edit. Uh, I guess you can use it more efficiently, but I'm just, you know, I make a tiny adjustment, paint it in there and then take another 10 curves to do the same thing. So as a starter, I want to see how that looks if you bring it down a little bit. So I'm going to zoom out, put the picture on the side so that we actually see what's going on. So I like that what the green does, of course, when you put it darker, well, it gets a little bit darker as well. So I kind of like that. So let's go where we something like here. That is not bad at all. And let's just make sure we only have this uh, brightness adjustment where we want it. So what I'll do is I'm going to select my brush with B on the keyboard. I'm going to hit a D for dog on my keyboard to get the default colors, which are, by the way, black and white, as you can see here. And I'm going to hit the X key on my keyboard to swap foreground and background color. Now with a black brush on a white layer mask, I can now reduce or remove that uh, darkness that I just brought into the image from the actions or from the sections that I want to remove it from. So I'm definitely going to remove it from the, the top part right here because that is the bright part. That is the kind of thing that is really the eye-catchy one later. So I just want to make sure I do not darken this down a lot. 
maybe something like that. Even up to back here, I like it. And then maybe we can take that darkness out as well here from certain areas. That's something, of course, completely up to you, but let's just assume that looks totally awesome. Fantastic. So now that we have that, the next step for me, at least, would be to give the whole thing a nice dark vignette. So essentially darkening down the surrounding or the edges of the image. To do that, there are again a thousand different ways, but I'm going to use is a simple stamp visible and the camera raw filter. So a stamp visible is simply done. Hit the command or control, alt, shift and E button on your keyboard and it's going to copy everything that is currently visible onto a new layer. Now with that layer, I can go to filter and down to camera raw filter. Awesome. So within the camera raw filter, you have different sections, one of which is the FX section right here. Just hit that one and here you have the post crop vignetting. So I'm just going to give it a nice vignette and probably I'm even going to feather it out a little bit. Something like, like something like that. I think this could work. We can try, we can see how it goes. Now let's see if we want to keep the highlights. I think we want to protect the highlights a little bit. And once I am happy and done, I'm simply going to hit OK. Now I never waste too much thought in getting the exact right light proportions because anything that I don't like right now, I can always fix later. But most of the times I don't even know that I don't like something until later. So we have a before and after with that particular vignette, which I do actually like. And it does point or it does make the eye of the uh, beholder, if you want, go to the very center of the screen, which is good. But we need more. We need really more attention on that bright part. So let's really make that light pop. I'm going to grab another curve here. I'm literally just going to make it explode. I'm going to bring it up to, I don't know, something weird like that. Awesome. Then I'm going to hit Command or Control I for Idaho on my keyboard. And what it will do is it simply inverts that layer and now well, a layer mask. And now the effect is hidden. If I now use a white brush with an append opacity of say 30% or something like that, I can bring that effect out. And as you see, I'm just tapping along here. Uh, some people would probably use to like a brush with a flow or anything like that. I'm just going to tap away, tap, 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 tap. And I'm going to bring it up to a point where I'm like, yeah, now there is enough attention at the very center of my image right here. Cool. And I mean, of course, there's a flaw with that because we can't just have light coming like mad from this area, but not from all the other light spots. So we will fix that in just a second as well. Cool. Let's have a look at the before and the after. Yeah, that's going to really bring that out much, much, much more. Now, another thing we can do is I'm going to make my brush smaller. And you see we have these light gaps like these things right here, where definitely light is shining through the canopy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my opacity to 40% or whatever you choose. I'm just going to hit it once. And that's just simply going to make that spot pop a little. And uh, it's going to make it look like there's really a ton of light coming through the different um, yeah, sort of holes in the canopy and that breaks up that one kind of a, yeah, canopy feeling that you have in here. I'm going to make it a bit smaller, one here as well, another one up here. Let's bring those really out, make those shine a little bit, something like that. Back here as well. This is obviously something that you can take your time with. I'm just going to do it quite quickly right now, but uh, that's not bad. I kind of like that. So now that we think we're done with the light, let's go back to the color and it's going to be a bit back and forth here. What I want to do is I'm going to grab a hue saturation layer and I'm going to crank up saturation. And I'm not doing this to actually paint it in necessarily, but I want to see how it looks and when it becomes ridiculous. Uh, I'm just going to bring it up, let's say to something like that. And the thing is, I do like this. It really makes the image pop a bit more, but I don't want this everywhere. Like I definitely do not want it in that path here. So what I'm going to do again is hit Command or Control and I for Idaho on my keyboard. And with a white brush, I'm not going to paint that increased uh, saturation into my photo. And specifically, I'm going to do this here in this sort of a red, what is that, straw, <laughs> if you want. Um, that is a very nice contrast to the green that we have already in the photo. So I'm just going to drop that in there. I'm going to drop it over here as well, drop it like it's hot, which in this case it is. Okay. okay, okay, okay. And once we have that, I see here it's a bit too hot for me, it's a bit too bright. So what I'll do is quickly create another curve, pull it down, pull it down, something like that. Hit Command or Control I, and now with a 20% opacity, I'm going to tap that in here. Otherwise, it kind of looks odd if these spots are so absolutely shiny. Also, you far too bright, holy lord. Okay, maybe here, well, a little bit. You get the idea, you know, do the, do the thing that you need to do with your curves to get the image nicely and evenly lit. Awesome. So I think we may even be able to paint a bit more of that uh, adjustment in, uh, of that saturation increase in here. 
really make it shine. And I know it looks like it might be too much, but the thing is, if you come back after 10 minutes, after you have a break, you'll often feel that it's just about right. Now to continue, make the image pop a little bit. Here's a very simple thing we can use, the camera raw filter again. It's such an awesome tool to have. So let's create another stamp visible by hitting Command or Control, Alt, Shift and E for Edgar on your, uh, on, on your phone. Sure, hit it on your phone, might as well. And then go to Filter, Camera, Raw Filter. And what we can use here are different areas of the camera raw filter again. Now, here's what I'm going to do. A, I'm going to increase the clarity. Clarity will make it essentially look a little bit sharper. And uh, I like that. So it just takes a little bit of that diffusion out of the photo. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is don't make it look like this. That's kind of weird. I mean, unless you like it, then, then it's totally cool. But uh, I'm going to go with a little bit, maybe something like that. Yeah, that's kind of nice. I like that. And I'm going to pump up the vibrance. Not too crazy, but maybe to something like that, that really makes it pop a little bit more, especially in the center of the image. And uh, lastly, what we can do is here we have the highlights bar. I think I'm also going to crank that up just a little bit, just maybe something like that. Awesome. Now that I have that, let's hit the OK button here. And if we have the before and the after, the image pops just ever so slightly more. If we wouldn't like it somewhere, we can always remove it using a layer mask. But for now, let's just assume we do like it and we are going to keep it. Another thing that I like to do is like right now we have a very even canopy. Let's break it up a little bit more with some warm tones. And there's a simple way to do that. We are simply going to create a color balance adjustment layer. And we're going to drag that yellow slider to the left hand side to, I don't know, here maybe. And let's drag that slider on the top here towards the red. Not too much, maybe something like this. Cool. Make that small, hit the Command or Control I buttons on your keyboard to hide that effect. And what I want to do is I want to give these splashes of lights a, a little bit of a, of a warm tone. So I'm just going to literally go to each of those and I'm going to hit once or twice onto my keyboard with an opacity of somewhere between 20 and 80%, 80 whatever you feel like. And you're just going to drop that in there like it is hot. And in this case, it is once again, very hot. Cool, let's drop that in here. And also if we wanted to, let me have a look how that looks without layer mask. If we wanted to, we can also bring it in a little bit into the canopy of our main attention grabber, which is in the center of the image. Fun, beautiful, awesome. So if we look at that before and after, I'm even uncertain if you can actually see that on your uh, screen right now when you watch it on the good old YouTubes, but I do like it a lot more. And other thing, because we are so full of ideas today, is I'm going to grab the hue saturation slider and I'm going to increase saturation. I know, I know. Wait, wait for it. Don't, don't hate me just yet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit command or control and I on the keyboard. And I'm just going to, for a certain number of these bamboo sticks, I'm just going to draw, draw that in the background. And why do I do that? Well, then it looks like that there is some real colorful stuff in the background. And again, it breaks up the very monotonous, otherwise canopy that we are having right now. Now, of course, usually you want to take your time with that. So not rushing through and making sure that you actually find good areas to paint that in. I'm doing this so random right now that it hurts just doing it. But that's totally cool. Let's increase that to 40%. So I'm going to throw that in here. I'm back in a second. Done. Again, that's a difference that you might not be able to see, but uh, you have to simply take my word for it. It looks much better on a nice screen. Awesome. Last thing we have to fix is the, the pathway here. It's far too red. It's kind of weird. I do not like it. Hue saturation layer. Bring that saturation down to something like that. Hit command and uh, or control and I on your keyboard to hide it. And with an opacity of 40%, I will get rid of all the damn color that is on the path here. Not all of it, of course, but... Uh, at least that really, really annoying, super strong red there. A couple of people here, photographers and the action. You can all suffer a little bit of color loss as well because you are not the center of my attention here. Awesome. And that really takes the heat out of that path a little bit. I like it much better. And the last thing this would bug me forever. There is this little light thing right at the corner of my image. Cannot have it. So what I'll do is I'm going to hit Command or Control, uh, Alt, Shift and N on my keyboard to create a new layer or you just click on the little new layer symbol. I'm going to hit J on my keyboard for Jaguar, which is the uh, spot healing brush tool. I'm just going to hit that thing once. Now, in this particular instance, it is actually quite horrid because it just <laughs> continues to grab that stuff from the bamboo shaft that is there, which is not surprising. So instead of the spot healing brush tool, let's hit S on the keyboard to get our stamp tool. And let's just try something else. I'm going to grab some, uh, well, hit the option key and just select some of the vegetation right here. 
and I'm going to draw that in here like there is no tomorrow. And you you better take it in there. Yeah, that's that's already absolutely fine. Nobody will ever notice that. Fantastic. Of course, usually do take your time with these things. <laughs> There's no rush. Awesome. But within a couple of very, very simple adjustments, literally, uh, we went from this image right here to that image and really boosted the colors, brought out that light much more and have a nice attention grabbing image from Japan, from Kyoto. Love the space. So to go through that again, we started by simply adjusting the sort of outline, the uh, symmetry of the image a little bit, added a bit more green to it, uh, threw in some darkness and made sure that we have more darkness to really draw the attention to the very center of the image, brought out the highlights a little bit more, added very subtle hints such as a bit more color here and there, brought out the red slightly, um, then gave the whole thing a bit more contrast, a bit clarity, just a little bit more pop also with the highlights, and then did some very small adjustments that altogether made the image a little bit more warm and completed it. And there we go. I am really in love with the whole scene. That bamboo forest itself is absolutely stunning. And if you do ever have the chance to go to Japan, make sure you do visit it. You can find more information in a full post, obviously, just below that video. So make sure if you're interested and want to go to that place, do check it out. I hope you did like the video and if you did actually like the video, do not forget to hit the thumbs up button and also if you're new, don't forget to subscribe because this way we can see each other again. Remember that for more photography tutorials, editing tutorials, uh, travel tips as to where to best go in different places to take cool pictures and much more photography related stuff, you can always head down to letsimage.com and well, read to your heart's content. Awesome, I am out of here, I shall see you next time, have a good one.